Hi, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. Today I'd like to touch a little bit on boring and specifically line boring. Line boring to me is a process, not necessarily a tool, although there are tools made for line boring. Um, but you can set up your own tooling and create your own line bore. Uh, it's probably less expensive than you can hire a crew and a company and, and a line bore facility come out and uh, to do the job for you, especially if it's just a one-off uh, shot. So here's a few uh, ideas that you might like to have. All right, let's, uh, let's start with just the basics of what's in a uh, line boring job. One, you need a boring bar. And you need to have tool bit holes in the bar itself. And usually, a quick tool bit hole in a boring bar is created by drilling a starter hole and then pushing a square broach through at your tool bit size. The other way is to go ahead, especially <laughs> even this one here I think is over a hundred bucks. So um, th those are things that you may not have. And the other option is like in this large bar here, I'm going to show you a low carbon tool bit sleeve. And what they have to offer in that as well. All right, you got your bar, and you know you're going to need holes, but you'll figure out those holes when you do your setup and you get all your components in there. Now you need to guide this bar on the path of your bore, uh, and it doesn't matter size or length of your bore to an extent, but it's not going to hold you back. Flange bearings are very excellent for setting up line bores. Is your bars, your coal roll stock normally comes with intolerance and a bearing tolerance, and they're almost like ready to use right off the shelf. And uh, and you go ahead and you pull your set screws out so they don't hinder you because you're you're, you're actually going to be free gliding in here. The reason why the flange bearing works so well, they have a slight spherical motion so this mounting of the bearing in relationship to its face that it mounts with does not have to be a hundred percent true in line with your with your bar bearing the bearing will self align themselves with the spherical action there's several different ways to mount up a bearing and, um, and I have one example here and I'm going to tell you of, of, of several as I go along but uh, we're going to pretend, and this is uh, pretty close to the same size of this job that will be included in on the video here um, uh, of the excavator boom that I line board. And this just happens to be the OD of the, the registers that uh, were on that job. And I have the actual plates that I mounted those bearings to. And these are just rims where I ground off and that's this was welded to the item itself holding these into place and I never knocked them off. On this side here I counterboard the diameter that was sticking out. There was a shoulder or a length of the diameter of the bosses that I bored sticking out giving the rough diameter or the finished diameter of the, the, the bosses themselves that I bored and that fit right on there. Okay. And this was the height that was down to the flat surface, and that's where I tack welded them on. So I had location and rigid support. Now, the bearing, if you put it on there like this, and you put your bar in here, uh, you have, it, how can you pass a tool bit past here? You need to stand it off so that you can... Uh, gain some working room to set and adjust your tool bit. Machine some sleeves. These are just Schedule 80 aluminum tube that's very handy to have. Now, the bearing went on here like this. And 
there's enough play in here that I can still maneuver that bearing around slightly. And this was the bottom carrier, welded on the same way that this one is here. And then I left a little bit of clearance down in here for chips and debris to come out of that opening there. So there's my two guide bearings that are going to let the bar go through that center. And of course, it could be horizontal like this, it could be vertical, that could be a shaft angle, as in a stern tube. Alright, here's, here's your basic setup here. So you got your part that's got to be bored. You've mounted your two bearings on each end. You got access here to get in and work your tool bit. Okay, and take and adjust. You can move it in and out and adjust it. Also, too, you want to pay attention and you want to go ahead and research. This would be good for coming up against a square shoulder and most boring uh, tool bits have got a, a, a lead angle because you want more pressure. Uh, tool pressure is a, a key important uh, part to eliminate uh, chatter, vibration, things like that. But those are things that you work out as you're, as you're uh, uh, creating your bore. All right, we have the, the bar, the bearings, and your part. It's all tied together. Now, there's two things that we need. We need a drive for the bar so that we can power this bar in a rotary motion. And we also need a way of feeding the longitudinal feed of the bar itself so that your cutter is uniform and cutting the material at a feed rate acceptable for the tool bit and the finish that you want. All right. So, you know, the bar's got to travel back and forth. Now we're going to cover um, ideas on that. All right, this is my CAD cartoon assisted drawing. <laughs> um, and I hope uh, we can make something of this uh, and find it useful. Basically what I have here is this is a stern gate. This is a ceiling edge here along the bottom of the gate and up each side. That had to make water contact. This is a series of ears here and this is a bar running through. This is your Morris taper at the end that went into an air motor. And here's a picture of an air motor with this star drive that I found on the internet. Alright, this unit right here is called an old man. And that's what this is up here in, in, a, in, in enlargement here. And this is bolted to the back of the air motor, which these air motors were roughly about 5 horsepower. And then there's a star drive, and on the inside of this star drive was a, a point out here. This is a center, 60 degree center, just like a, uh, a live center on a, on a lathe or a dead center. This bar right here had two slots in this end here, which was mounted with uh, bolts to your rigid section here, and a center drill here at the butt end and then you were able to go ahead and push the motor and bar all in one direction. What kept that from just going that direction was mounting a spring and a collar against one of your bearings. And here's an enlargement of that drawing here. Here's the ear, your bearings mounted. They're standoffs, straight solid standoffs that held this bearing here instead of a ring because we were locating this bore in relationship to the flat face distance out, distance down. And that same correspondence was done on the mating hinge uh, points on the ship itself. Alright, now here's a little close-up. And I've kind of made a little dummy here. And here's our bearing, very similar. And of course I just bent a piece of walling rod here and I just had, happened to have a collar here. But this would be set screwed on here and that's how you would preload the bar. Now, my travel for those ears on that job there, they're about two inch, give or take a quarter inch, and a eight, nine inch spring would be sufficient to control the travel, and the star drive had the same thing. And on the end of the bar was a Morris taper that fit and locked into the air motor. 
the air motor had a control knob on one end went to the air compressor the other end was solid bar and it locked against a keeper rod usually that rod and the old man were all tied into one all right and that's how that and and that was that's almost the bar i think we went in one side and we came in on the other side and everything was set up with piano wire and everything else so i don't think we were going all the way across but i was able to i remember actually boring four holes at one time so uh, you know the horsepower and everything else and th these things are loud you're wearing earmuffs all day long it's it's uh you know it's fun once <laughs> all right it's enough online born stern gates and how we actually created the drive and the spring action you had to keep loaded so that you you weren't chattering on the uh, tool bit now in in the pictures that I have in the series of the line bore for the excavator, um, I line bored them right here in the drill press. The main mast extension that came in with a solid bore, I just had it blocked on the floor. I didn't have it anchored down to the base or anything, so it was totally independent. And I brought it in and I kind of just eyeballed it, okay? And I was able to with the Morris taper here I was able to locate it in here and then with two series of ball joints I was able to let this run in line with the bore and the spindle uh, run all by itself and I, I didn't cause any binding or force so that's how I was able to connect and take care of the rotation and the feed rate all with the drill press here. Um, I did incorporate a small hole here at the top of the Morris taper and in the drift hole here when this goes up in here I was able to put that roll pin right in there and I had a safety so it doesn't come out. This is typical actually on a horizontal boring machine you had two you had a knockout key and, and, a, and a holding key uh, and they worked opposite and you had two holes here uh, you, some of them had the, the sleeves but most of the time this hole here was solid this was all solid and this hole here was one pin that went in and forced it up in there and the other one after you knocked that back out you were able to release that uh, and that just in a horizontal boring machine, one of my favorite machines of all times to run. Um, all right, let's uh, let's take a look at spinning and driving. All right, the bar slides through this bevel gear. All right, and that gives its freedom. That key is shaped so that it overhangs the top and the bottom of that bevel gear. So that bevel gear is just basically just doing a rotational motion. And whether you actually had a, uh, a, a key in your shaft long enough to make your travel, you could have a, uh, a pulley that would be electric drive, chain drive, hydraulic sprocket, anything to rotate there. You could easily have a keyed bore and rotate your shaft. Now... This has a feed, and it's all through the gear drive, this gear train here. We had four speeds, but we did, we did uh, just do it on, on the slowest speed. It gave us a real nice finished cut, and of course, that drove the rack gear. All right, I'm going to show you another way that you could actually drive your bar 